What it do, man? It's your boy Battle Truth coming to you live and direct from the Battle Truth headquarters. Let's get right off into this, man. We need to end these Tech Nine conversations once and for all. You keep on rising up every now and then. Some battle rappers wanting to say things. Well, some people may be offended at what I'm about to say, what I'm about to break down, what I'm about to address. So, if you don't want to hear, I'm going to give you time. Wait for it. Wait for it to get up out of here while we break down this Tech Nine. And we're going to put him to rest for good. That this don't even rise up no more. So, if you don't want to hear what I'm about to say about him, leave. Now, with that being said, I'm so tired of hearing battle rappers saying how good Tech 9 was. How real he was. How good he was. He appeared to be good. He appeared to be real. But after further deliberation and truth that's been revealed on what happened to him, we have to call it what it is now. It's not a matter of opinions anymore. I'm tired of people trying to say that too to try to leave Rome for over life. Well, he wasn't convicted or nothing. Well, it wasn't proven. He didn't give it a chance for it to be proven. That's why he took his life, which raised a lot of speculations. And actually, it actually, him, him opening and closing his own case. That's why his death is not being investigated. And the case is closed on exactly what happened to him. He killed himself just before trial, where he would have to stand and face his accuser on the accounts that he had been charged with just before his death. When he took his own life, he wasn't a good person. So stop saying that. Well, a person may say, like, yes, he was. He was a good person. Says who? And how do you how do you measure good? Well, according to the Bible, ain't nobody good but Jesus Christ. The Bible said there is none good, no, not one. But our Father who is in heaven, Christ said that. But Christ is the only perfect man ever recorded in history to be perfect. Nobody else ever was. So we all fall short of the glory. Every last one of us. But when you're talking about good. The man was not good. He was involved in a lot of sick, wicked, twisted things. And even in his battle rap raps, as we go back to him, he's talking about having sex with underage girls at a, at a grown age he is. This ain't some. Let's keep in mind, this wasn't something that this man was doing 10 years ago or 15, 20 years ago that he may have could have repented and don't do no more because he, he more old and wise and understand he must he might have been wrong back then when he was younger. This is something the man was doing up to his death, up to his death, not even a year ago, not even a year old ago, what this man was doing. Not even one year old ago, all the stuff this man was doing. Being over the age of 30. So, this was something he was doing recently against minors. And even in, again, his raps, he was already on record addressing he don't care about having sex with minors in his raps that we used to laugh at and thought was actually funny and hilarious because we didn't think that he actually meant it. We thought he was just comedy and jokes, but he was actually telling the truth. Not only that, how was he good? He had one child. He had one child. One biological child. He didn't even care. He didn't even care about leaving when he took his own life. He didn't consider her. You don't consider your own child. You get that much to the point where you cower out rather than facing your shame and getting yourself right and facing whatever have to come with it. 
You won't even use the love of your own child to make you a better man. You be, you, 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 I guarantee you, he thought about her when he knew he was finna take his life, but still chose to take his life. How could you not? If you know you finna take your life, you consider things before taking your life. I'm not finna believe she didn't cross his mind. And yet he still signed off on the death certificate. How is that good? What's so real about that? He also was addressing Arsenal. Y'all remember this? He also was addressing Arsenal. On the pedophile lines, Arsenal would be saying in his raps. Y'all remember he was addressing that? Like, yeah, you know, Arsenal, you know, the talking about the kids and the pedophile uh, uh, raps with the kids. Leave the kids out. I don't respect that and all this. But he was actually doing it. But he was actually doing it. Y'all remember that? Y'all don't remember that? When he addressed Arsenal on the pedophile bars, when Arsenal was getting all that heat for mentioning the kids, and he had nut on the baby rags, and he had F your little daughter and all that stuff. And he spoke out against Arsenal on that, only for him to be actually doing it in real life. What about that? Y'all forgot about that? What about all the time he was calling Jack Boy Mang the low life thug? You hood, you cook, you thug, you this and that, you low, you scoundrel. When in reality, he was only confronting himself and Jack Boy Mang. He was talking to Jack Boy Mang at the same time, confronting himself. So when I'm hearing all this, rest in peace, tech, and tech, this and that. Leave that closed. Don't open up them doors. Because when you open up them doors, what you do is allow the whole truth to come in and not just the part you want to come in. When you open up them doors and you keep opening up that casket, then you allow the skeleton to fall out of it. You allow the skeleton to fall out of it. A lot of people don't like the real hardcore low down truth. They want to be desensitized. This is the era we live in where you desensitize and you compromise. They don't like to get off into real truth. But this is battle truth. I have to address the truth. Y'all talk about a lot of things he was dealing with in his personal life. And y'all talk about whether it's mental illnesses. Let me tell you something. In the Bible day, there was no such thing as mental illnesses. Mental illnesses in the Bible was described as demonic possession, oppression, or obsessions. One of the three. The Bible clearly let it be known behind every act there was a demonic spirit behind it. And when people suffered these things, they were taken to men and women of God. <clears throat> That's a fact. And then their age is different. Now you took into a doctor or a counselor or some type of uh, psychiatrist or something to medicate or sedate a demon. You can't sedate and medicate a demon. It's a spirit. You can do it to the human body, but you can't do it to the spirit. The spirit is that great and stronger. I say this to say this. Tech Nine was a Muslim. A lot of American Muslims are weak-minded who don't really want to know the truth. That's just a fact. And I'm going to prove it to you. And how it's even recorded in this. Answering Muslims. Go to Answering Muslims on Google. Tech Nine was a Muslim that was actually reliving the spirit. Reliving the spirit of his Muslim prophet, Muhammad. The founder of Islam. A lot of people do not know that Muhammad, who was 54 years old, married a six-year-old girl and had sex with her. Sex with her. He consummated the marriage. That means sex. He had sex with her at the age of nine. When he was over the age of 50. That's a fact. Claiming to be a man of God. 
which is false. Because no man of God, first of all, is not an Arab. As far as like, not man of God as Arab, but prophet. No prophet of God ever been an Arab. He was an Arab man. All God's prophets in the Bible that wrote the Bible were Israelites. Was Israelites. Every last one. So these disqualify him out the gate. They don't like to know these truth though. Because when you're in rebellion to God, you accept anything. And he would pray five times a day. As Muslims, they taught to pray five times a day. Why? This keeps them in worship to call upon demon satanic spirits. How? Because the religion itself wars against God, Christ, and all the body of believers. You cannot be a Muslim unless you confess that Jesus Christ is not the son of God. This religion came 600 years after the death of Christ, after the death of Christ. But the word itself came in the 8th century, uh, 800 years after the death of Christ. 800 years after the death of Christ. Okay? So the whole religion itself was built upon going against Christ. That's why in it, it goes against the Bible. The Bible said Jesus died on the cross. The Quran said Jesus didn't die on the cross. The Bible say that Jesus is the son of God. The Quran say Jesus is not the son of God. The Bible say that God exists in three persons. First John chapter five, verse seven. There are three that bear record in heaven. The father, the word, and the spirit. And these three are one. And the Quran say that is not true. Do not say God is one in the Trinity. So it is the opposite of the Bible. What the Bible say, it is an opposite of. So you either believe one or you believe the other. The Bible say whoever believe in Jesus Christ will receive eternal life. The Quran say whoever believe in Jesus Christ is going to hell. So it's not the same God. It's not the same word. You have a choice which one to believe. Do you believe what was first or do you believe what came after? Do God speak after or do he speak first? God speak first. We going to believe the first. Y'all can believe what came after. With that being said, that's why the Bible say, I am the Lord your God. I speak the ending from the beginning. I speak first. If you want to know what's going to happen, go to the beginning. I tell you the end from the beginning. God speak first, not last. The devil come try to rebuttal. God speak and the devil try to rebuttal. That being said, he prayed five times a day as a Muslim. And when you praying, you praying on the spirit of Muhammad, which was Allah's messenger, who is no other than the devil himself. Don't let nobody deceive y'all. These are facts they don't want y'all to know. And when you're praying five times a day for the spirit of Allah, which is the devil, and the spirit of Muhammad, which was his messenger, that's what spirit coming inside you. Just like as believers, we are taught by God to pray for the spirit of Christ. What was Christ's spirit? We don't pray for the pastor's spirit. We don't pray for the believer's spirit. We pray for the spirit of Christ, who is holy, righteous, perfect, one with God. We pray for that spirit to be just like our Savior was, not how other people were. That's why they can never give a claim against Christ. They can never give a claim against Christ. They always try to speak of other people. Oh, the pastor did that or such and such. I don't care what man did. What did Christ do? Tell me what Christ is guilty of. Well, until you can find one thing Christ guilty of, then that's why I'm going to continue to praise and worship. And I guarantee you, I'll be good here. Now, when we talk about Muhammad, he was disqualified. He had sex with a six. He married a, a six-year-old girl and had sex with her recordingly uh, at the age of nine. They're going to try to lie. But here you go. Let's go into it. Here go, here go the evidence right here. Okay. Let's go into all these facts. Her name was Aisha. From the Encyclopedia of Islam under Aisha. Sometime after the death of Khadijah. 
Khadijah, that was Mohammed, uh, like first wife. Uh, she was rich and had a lot of money, left him with her wealth. Suggested to Muhammad that he should marry either Aisha, the six year old daughter of his chief follower, uh, or Sada Zama, a widow of 30, who had gone as a Muslim, who, who, who had gone as a Muslim to Abyssinia, and whose husband had died there. Muhammad is said to have asked her to arrange for him to marry both. It had already been agreed that Aisha should marry Jabari Mutim, whose father, though was still pagan, was friendly to the Muslims. By common consent, however, disagreement was set aside, and Muhammad was betrothed to Aisha. The marriage was consummated until uh, some months after Hadidra in April 623 AD to 624. Aisha went to live in the apartment with Muhammad in Muhammad's house, later the mosque of Median, Medina, my, I'm sorry, Medina. She could not have been no more than 10 years old at the time, when, time and took her toys to her new home. She still was playing with toys. Okay, here's another one. This is Aisha speaking herself. The little six-year-old girl. This is her speaking when she got older about their relationship. She said, the prophet, Muhammad, engaged me when I was a girl of six years old. We went to Medina and stayed at a home, a Harriet Kizari. Then I got ill and my hair fell out. Some of my hair fell out. Later on, my hair grew again, and my mother, um, Ruman, came to me while I was playing on a swing with some of my girlfriends. She was playing on a swing with some of her friends. My mother called me, and I went to her, not knowing what she wanted to do to me. She caught me by my hand and made me stand at the door of the house. I was breathless then. And when my breath became all right, she took water and rubbed my face and head with it. Then she took me into the house. There in the house, I saw some and sorry women who said best wishes and Allah blessings and good luck. Then she entrusted me to them and they prepared me for my marriage. Unexpectedly, Allah's messenger came into me in the forenoon and my mother handed me over to him. At that time, I was only a girl of nine years of age. I was only a girl of nine years of age. So listen at this. Aisha, the prophet, wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old. And he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old. Had some said, I have been informed that Aisha remained with the prophet for nine years till his death. Uh, Aisha reported, Allah's messenger married me when I was six years old, and I was admitted in his house at the age of nine. The apostle of Allah married me when I was seven years old, when I was seven years old, and he had intercourse with me when I was nine years old. He had intercourse with me when I was nine years old. Uh, from the history of Tabari. Then the men and women got up and left. The messenger of God consummated his marriage with me in my house when I was nine years old. Neither a camel nor a sheep was slaughtered on behalf of me. The prophet, Muhammad, married her three years before the immigration when she was seven years old and consummated the marriage when she was nine years old. After he had immigrated to Medina in Sarah, she was eight years old. I mean, she was 18 years old when he died. So that was his spirit. He had the spirit of the prophet. He prayed. He prayed. He had the spirit of the prophet. That's why worshiping, not knowing who you worship, is real dangerous. There's only one Holy Spirit. 
There's only one holy, righteous, good, clean spirit, and it's the Holy Spirit. You only get that through Jesus Christ. Apart from Christ, you don't get the Holy Spirit. You don't get it at all. So any other spirit you calling on other than Jesus Christ is a demonic, satanic, unclean spirit. And just like Muhammad the prophet had a history of raping young girls, molesting young girls, so was his followers. And you know what's called? I like this part right here where they talk about American people. Look what it say right here. Um... It says the above references are just a sample of Islamic source material statement that Aisha was nine when her marriage was consummated. Consummated mean uh, uh, they got married, but it wasn't established until he had sex with her. OK, so the marriage was consummated when she was nine. Over and over again, the great Islamic scholars state that Aisha was nine when her marriage was consummated. No serious Muslim scholar doubt this. Again, no serious Muslim scholar would doubt this. Generally, it is embarrassed Muslims living in America who challenge her age for a more in-depth presentation of the evidence of Aisha being nine See these other articles. So it's American Muslims embarrassed that he did this. They the only ones who try to defend it. But no serious Muslim who understands the history of the Hadiths and uh, 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 know the truth about this would deny this. It's only American Muslims who are embarrassed of what he did that try to defend and make this argument. But any real true Muslim scholar who know the history of this and look in depth of this, they will not deny that this is true. He had sex with that girl when she was nine. And it's the same thing Tech Nine was doing. So let's end these discussions and all this fake stuff. And it's your boy Battle Truth. It ain't my judgment, that's some question. It's yours. Let's finally lay Tech Nine to rest for good and not bring this up no more.